Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Finally, we have finished the corporate finance class and I would like to make a summary of what we have learned in this class at IPMI International Business School taught by our fun and great lecturer, Professor Roy Sembel. In this video, I will be sharing about the whole lesson using mind mapping methodology. Hopefully, all of you can get the main points about corporate finance class through my video. But first of all, I would like to share the tips of how to survive in Professor Roy Sample class. The main thing, never afraid to make mistake because we learn from our mistake. And then you have to improve a Google search ability because you will never know when he will call your name and ask you a question. Now, let's talk about the first thing that we learned about financial management. Financial management is about the optimum orchestration of the internal and external financial resources toward the significant and sustainable value creation. There are four main goals. First, the basic objective. Second, operational objective. Third, social objective. And the last one, the research objective. In this lesson, we also learn about the cash flow structure between firm and financial market. How the cash flow from the financial market goes into the firm, then it will retain the cash flow. From the cash flow, the firm will pay back in the form of dividend and in addition to dividend. The firm also pay taxes to the government. Moreover, behind those numbers, there are more potential principal agent problems that present potential conflicts of interest between the BODs of management and the shareholder. And one of the things that can minimize the potential problem of these principal engine problems is good corporate governance, which will promote the transparency, accountability, responsibility, independency, and also fairness, or we can simplify as tariff. In this chapter, we also learn about the time value of money, which explain about the situation where receiving $1 today is worse than receiving $1 in the future due to the opportunity cost. How we value or calculate the value of money in the future is called compounding and how to calculate the present value or from the future value is called discounting. That is the first part that we learn about financial management. Let's move on to the second part of our course that is capital budgeting. Capital budgeting is about the planning process for investment in long-term assets. The first methodology of capital budgeting is the payback period. Payback period is as if we are asking ourselves about how many years it will take to cover the initial investment. Other methodologies are net present value, profitability index, and the last one is internal rate of return. These three methodologies consider all cash flow, time value of money, and require rate of return. To summarize this, in capital budgeting concept, we will estimate the expected future cash flow and evaluate the project based on the capital budgeting evaluation criteria before we will decide whether the project is good or not. We also learned about how we balance the potential return versus the risk of investment, then learn about passive or active investing. Passive investing is when we just invest in following the market. But for the active investing, we look at some parameters which are fundamental analysis, technical analysis, and the last one is market or investor sentiment. The following chapter is about analysis of securities and portfolio investment. The first interesting things that we learned was about financial statement analysis. From financial statement, we should be able to look at the return potential. There are parameters in financial statement, which are profitability, we can see from return on asset or return on equity, and then liquidity, we can check the current ratio and quick ratio. Activity, it's from total asset turnover and total fixed asset turnover. Leverage, 
debt to asset ratio and debt to equity ratio and market ratio this is dividend yield and price earning ratio Beside those parameters, in the financial statement analysis, we learn if the company is healthy or not by using DuPont analysis. With DuPont analysis, we break down return on equity. This breakdown helps us see the impact of profit margin leverage and turnover on shareholder returns. Let's look a bit closer. The calculation of the return on equity often we call ROE for short is simply net income divided by equity so this tell us how much profit a company generate for each dollar of equity for example a ROE of 25% tell us that for every one dollar of equity the company generates 25 cents in the profit Essentially, the DuPont analysis is a breakdown to look closer at how ROE was generated. Next is about capital structure and corporate restructuring. In this chapter, we learn about the capital asset pricing model, which allows us to understand about the risk-free rate and also the market risk premium. And from those parameters, we would be able to know about our estimated return of our investment. In capital structure, which consists of debt and shareholders' equity, we learn about the capital structure of the company from the Monigliani and Miller theory, which is a capital structure theory. The assumption from the Monigliani and Miller theory, there are no transaction costs, no taxes, everyone has the same information, borrowing rates and debt is riskless and that doesn't affect the operations. Both of them also wrote an important paper in 1958 in which they proved that with tax deductibility of interest payment, the optimal capital structure was 100%. In terms of financing the asset, we learn from RGR Nabisco Leverage by Alkes, which gave an insight of how to create optimal capital structure in order to maximize the value of the firm. There are two factors that determine optimal capital structures. There are tax benefit and financial distress. Now arrive in the next chapter. It's about the fraud management and dividend policy. We learn about the occupational fraud and abuse. In this part, we talk about corruption, asset misappropriate, and fraud loan statement. Basically, fraud is committed or happened due to three major factors, which we call the triangle of fraud. They are perceived opportunity, perceived pressure, or rationalization. Some of the reasons of occupational fraud are personal debt, lifestyle, overspeculation, gambling, pressure from family, and others. To recognize fraud, you should look out for the so-called red flags of fraud. For example, employee who never takes vacation, watch out. Frequent missing or documents, or one employee cover the whole process. So you need to learn about this to recognize where there is fraud or not. Our group, the value investor, got the assignment to review the movie called Wall Street, Money Never Sleep. The task were to summarize that the movie was all about in terms of financial issue and to explain about the fraud loan transaction in the movie and its ethical or illegal. And at last, we share what financial lesson we could get from the movie. We did a class debate and learned whether the company or firm should pay a dividend or not. Dividend policy really involves two main decisions. The first one is how much of the firm's earning that should be distributed to the shareholder as dividends. The second one is how much should be retained for capital investment. Let's go to the next chapter, international finance. First of all, international finance is about foreign exchange market that allow currency to be exchanged in order to facilitate international trade or financial transaction and it has evolved from the gold standard to agreement on the fixed exchange rate 
to a floating brain system. We also learned about the currency future and option market. Currency future contract actually specify a standard follow of a particular currency to be exchanged on a specific settlement date. They are sold on exchange unlike the forward contracts. Meanwhile, the currency call or put option give the fight to sell or to buy a specific currency at the specific price used to be called as the strike or the excess or the exercise price within a specific period of time. At the last part of our lesson, we discuss about our portfolio evaluation that each group has invested at the beginning at our lessons. What we learned most was about when we pick a company to invest, don't just consider based on the brand and name only. It is important to consider a company financial fundamentals including earning, operating margin, and cash flow. Together, this factor can obtain a reasonable picture of the company's current financial health and how profitable it's likely to be in the near and a long term. Use fundamental and technical analysis before choosing company as portfolio investment. That's the closing of the course mind mapping video from the Corporate Finance Plus. I hope you can got all the ideas about this course. Thank you so much for watching my video. See you next time.